Thanks. So as John said, my name is Jeff Terrace. I'm going to talk about object storage on Crack. And Crack is a system that we built uh, that provides strong consistency and high throughput. So, I'll, and this is joint work with my advisor, Mike Friedman. I want to start off by talking about what I'd like to call the data storage revolution. And what I mean by this is that traditionally, uh, to store information, people have used relational databases. And what's nice about relational databases is that they provide a very structured way to organize your information. They make it so you can do very complex queries and, and views uh, in order to organize your information in complex ways. So there's been a recent uh, change where a lot of companies have transitioned to object storage systems. And what object storage systems are is that they're very simple put and get interface. You have uh, an identifier that identifies a value, and you can query your system and get the value associated with that identifier. So some examples are Amazon's Dynamo, Yahoo's Peanuts, and others that are listed here. And the reason that they do this uh, are for a few things. Speed, scalability, availability, and throughput. These are the, uh, the main properties that are the focus of very interactive applications, such as websites. Um, and also, they don't really need the complexity involved with relational databases. Uh, many very interactive websites could count the number of complex joins they do on one hand. It's just not necessary. So the way that they get away with uh, this increased speed and scalability and availability and throughput uh, is that they provide a type of consistency called eventual consistency. And what I mean by this is that when you're doing replication, you have multiple replicas storing an object. And when a write request comes in, you typically have a manager that handles how to replicate this update. So what the manager does is just send the update to all of its replicas. But what can happen is that one update could be lost, as shown here. Now, if this happens, if a read request comes in, if it goes to one replica, it might get version A. If it goes to another replica, it might get version, might get version B. So what eventual consistency provides is that writes are ordered after they're committed, but reads can be out of order or stale. So this is nice because it makes it so it's easy to scale object storage systems and they, uh, to provide high throughput, but at the same time, it's very difficult for applications to program for this type of model. Uh, as a programmer, it's difficult when you do two successive reads, uh, it could actually go backwards in time. So the traditional way to, to, um, to solve this type of consistency, to provide a stronger uh, solution to consistency, um, is to, when an update comes into the manager, instead of just sending them out at once, uh, you could do some sort of agreement protocol. So I'll illustrate here two-phase commit. Uh, you could use any type of agreement protocol, but for simplicity, I'll just demonstrate two-phase commit. What the manager does is send out a prepare message, tells all the replicas to prepare the update. The replicas will all vote yes. Uh, for simplicity, we'll just say that they all vote yes for now. And the manager says to commit, and the replicas acknowledge the commit. So uh, what this provides is that reads and writes are strictly ordered in the system. It's very easy to program on this model because you know when, you're, uh, when your updates commit, that means that they commit, you'll always get the latest version. Uh, but these are expensive to implement. Uh, they don't necessarily scale well. You might have to sacrifice availability if you use these agreement protocols. So what we wanted to do, uh, the motivation for our work, our goal here, is to provide, uh, to keep the easy programming model, to have a strong consistency model in our system, but to make it easy to scale and have high throughput. So these are our goals. So when designing our work, uh, we used some very interesting previous work called chain replication. This is by Van Reness and Schneider. And what they do in, in chain replication is rather than having this manager replica model, they rearrange their, their replicas into a chain. And they, call, they rename the first replica in the chain to the head and the last one to the tail. Now, what happens here, when a write request comes in, the head propagates the write down the chain serially until it reaches the tail. Once it reaches the tail, it's considered committed. And the tail sends an acknowledgment backwards through the chain until the head receives it and then can respond to the write request. Read requests all go to the tail, and this has the effect of uh, ordering reads and writes. So what happens here is that um, if multiple writes and reads all come in at once, the tail can actually decide what to do with these. Um, it, can order, it can decide the ordering and respond to them, and this provides the strong consistency guarantee that we wanted. So what chain replication does is it provides the strong consistency guarantee that we want. It's a very simple way to do replication. And it increases the write throughput over traditional agreement protocols because writes can be pipelined down the chain. But the problem here is that uh, you might have noticed there's, there can be low th read throughput. And the reason for this is that all reads have to go to the tail. So if you increase the size of the chain, you don't get any increased read throughput. 
So what we wanted to do with this work is figure out, could we increase the, the throughput? Um, and we're going to use some insight, an assumption here, that most applications are read-heavy. We get this from industry that um, sometimes they see even up to 100 to 1 read-to-write ratio in their, in their object storage systems. So I'll introduce Crack. And what we do in Crack is we borrow the chain replication model, but we say that there are two states per object. They're clean and dirty. So what I mean by clean is that all replicas in the system are storing the same version number. You see here they're all storing version 1. And if that's the case, if, if the object is clean, that means that we can read anywhere, because we get this guarantee that they're all st storing the same version number. So the question is, what happens when a write request comes in? Um, what the head will do is take the new update, we'll call it version 2 here, it'll add it to its data, uh, its data store, and it'll mark itself as dirty. So here the, the purplish color means that it's dirty. And uh, what the head will do next is propagate it down to the next replica. The next replica will add version 2 to its data store, mark itself dirty, and continue to the propagation. So the question becomes here now, what happens when we get a read request? So if a read comes into a clean replica, we do like we did before, the replica can just respond with version number 1 right away because it knows that it's clean. If a read request, if a read request comes into a dirty replica, um, it's a little more complicated. What it has to do is contact the tail to get the latest version number. Remember that the tail is what, uh, you know, once an update reaches the tail, it's considered committed, so it actually enforces the ordering. So the replica goes and contacts the tail, says what is the latest version number. The tail responds with the number 1 in this case, and the replica looks up version number 1 in its data store and responds with the value v1. So this has the property that no matter where we read in the chain right now, we're still going to get version 1. So as the protocol continues, the replica uh, continues the propagation until it reaches the tail. The tail, uh, once it receives an update, switches version 1 to version 2 in its data store, which has the effect of committing. And so if a dirty replica gets a read request now, when it contacts the tail to get the version number, it's going to get version 2. So the replica now can notice that version 2 is the latest version that it has in its, in its object store. And it, this means that because the tail has, uh, has received version 2, that means it's committed, and it can remove version 1 from its data store. And then it can mark itself as clean. So the replica would then respond with version 2. So with this, uh, we could have a lazy model here where we mark replicas clean uh, once we get read requests, but as a, an optimization, we have the tail send acknowledgments backwards through the chain, which has the effect of marking them clean somewhat earlier. And once the head receives an acknowledgment, it can respond to a write request. Now, uh, some optimizations for sending acknowledgments, rather than the tail having to send it backwards through the tail serially, uh, if the, the chain was actually in a multicast group, we could have the tail send the, uh, the acknowledgment to the multicast group at once, because all the replicas could then be marked clean faster. Now, that's just a small optimization, but more importantly, uh, when write requests come in, the head could actually multicast the data part of the write request. So what this allows us to do is that if a write request is large, say one megabyte, rather than serially propagating it down the chain, which could take a long time for large uh, amounts of data, we can actually have the head send uh, this new version, v3, to all the replicas, and the replicas add them to their data store with a marker that says that they're temporary. And then the head just sends a small metadata message down the chain, which the replicas, upon receiving, will look for version 3 and take away the temporary marker and mark themselves as dirty. And notice that it, uh, we don't need a reliable multicast layer, uh, because if the replica doesn't receive an update, it could just fetch it from its predecessor. So what Crack provides, uh, we still have the strong consistency from chain replication, and the simple replication, and the increased write throughput. But what we add, our additional contributions, is that we allow read throughput to scale for read mostly workloads. So if the chain is mostly clean, you're going to get uh, an increased throughput. It's going to scale linearly with the chain length. Um, and that's why we call our system chain replication with apportion queries. Uh, we can also support an eventual consistency model. So you can imagine that for some applications where strong consistency is not necessary, rather than having the extra delay involved when a replica is dirty, could just return the latest version. So uh, we've been talking so far about um, a data storage system within a data center. That's most uh, data storage systems are considered just on a local area network. Um, this means that nodes are well connected and have low latency. But this is not always the case in, in large applications. A lot of large applications are actually geo-replicated. Uh, so here's an example of uh, the data centers that Google has within the United States. Um, and companies usually do this for two reasons. 